Um, one of the things I've been talking about quite a bit lately, and I'd love your perspective on this. Uh, I have really struggled with uh, actually my own TEDx talk. I, I was, I think in 2013, I, uh, I talked about the importance of sharing our voice. And you mentioned that too. And I think we've gone to such an, such a swing of the pendulum where it was like nobody was sharing what they're doing and now everybody's sharing what they're doing that I find nobody's listening to one another that nobody's actually you know just paying attention or you know and it's like we're we're talking uh we're listening so we can then interject our ideas right and like maybe that's part of a podcast I guess right because you know there, there I guess there's a time and place for that but how do you find that that space where we teach kids not just to use their voice, but to listen to the voice of others. Yeah. You know, this is another one where I feel like here's a simple idea, but mm -hmm. I feel like we can really get that conversation going. So one of the things that I've observed, um, I love using Flipgrid for students to present and for that to really be an interactive conversation. And I think that a lot of times people even forget the power of Flipgrid for that threaded conversation. But my simple idea here is like presentations that happen in the classroom tend to be very one directional. So getting everybody to stand up in the front of the room and give their presentation usually takes a couple of class days um, to get through everybody. And, you know, that person has time to answer some questions. Usually that's a presentation format. You present something, there's a little Q&A at the end. Um, what you tend to observe is that as the presentations go on longer, people ask less questions, students get a little right. bit tired of, of hearing all the presentations. Um, now, I know some people are probably listening and they're like, okay, having people stand up in the front of the room and present is a really powerful skill. I'm not going to disagree with you. I think yep. this is something that should happen definitely in every classroom. But my thing here is like, how do we give multiple platforms and ways to assess students at different times? All right. So let's transition this to saying that instead of an in the front of the classroom, in front of the board, everybody goes up and talks, then we make them flip grid presentations. Everybody records their presentation and then it all gets posted on this grid, this flip grid. And then everybody, instead of at being required to listen to every single one, maybe you say, all right, everybody's going to listen to three different ones. Now you're giving students choice of which mm -hmm. topics they want to choose. So maybe they are really drawn to one of the subjects and now they're able to really listen to that. And they are required to give video feedback to that student who had presented. So they're engaging with it. They're talking through it. And they're required to, if they have to watch three of them, give three meaningful responses. And they're being assessed in a way on mm -hmm. that critique that they're able to give or that thought. So in this way, first of all, you're giving those students who might present better on a flip grid, maybe it's because they want to write out a script and they're reading it as they're recording. Maybe it's because they're creative on video and they're going to add in all these cool elements that you would never even know and see about the student. So you're giving them the opportunity when they're presenting. And then when you're doing the, you know, the sharing out and students are learning from one another, you're giving them more choice as to which ones they engage with. And again, an opportunity to learn about like, Oh, what are your mm -hmm. students choosing? Um, what are they really interested in? And, um, and you're still really, you know, giving that conversational peace and i think it can be more powerful in ways I, lo I love that because it is that is like embedded listening into the process and and like learning to respond and connect right like i remember um years ago we we actually did this thing called digital parent volunteers and so parents that wanted to volunteer in their kids classroom that couldn't physically be there they would actually uh, respond to comments on blogs um, yeah. Or they would respond to blogs and they'd write comments, right? And so one of the things that we did with the parents, which was really cool, was we made them take a, like a little short course before they were allowed to, to be the digital parent volunteer. And they actually had to learn to write comments to encourage. So you couldn't just say, hey, great job. It's like, what do kids say to that? So it was like, how do you actually, you know, uh, respond to something? 
uh, and then, you know, get more information of the, the students so that they can actually respond more. So it wasn't just you would respond to your kid's blog, you were responding and kids were excited about that. And then the kids would learn to respond back and kind of go back and forth. 